Chemical Abstracts has developed this wonderful and very convenient system for recording every known substance. Instead of a name, which are sometimes very cumbersome, especially most compounds don't even have a short common name, we can use very convenient registry numbers. As I say here in the first bullet point, it's a very easy shortcut to the name of a full substance. Besides chemical abstracts, the registry number system is so useful and so popular, it's used in many other databases. It is at such a level of detail that we will see in the other slides that every unique substance and every variation of a substance has its own specific registry number. When you look at these numbers themselves, there is no meaning in the actual digits of the numbers. They just record the substances as they receive them in chemical abstracts, and it means nothing more than that, whether a number is small or whether it's large. The one important feature about a registry number is that I've mentioned before that in most databases, hyphens and dashes are read as spaces, not so with registry numbers. The dashes that are part of the number are an integral part of the number and you must always include them. To show you the level of detail, I'm looking at one substance, formaldehyde. This is in the top left-hand corner of this slide. It's a very familiar chemical formula, and there is its registry number. You can see the number 124 next to it at the top. There are 124 different variations of formaldehyde, and each variation has its own unique registry number. I'm only showing five of these variations. The second one is dideuterated formaldehyde. The one next to it is just deuterated without specifying any more than that. If it's carbon-14 labeled, it is there also, carbon-16, oxygen-18, and so on. This means when you are looking for, at any substance, even something as simple as formaldehyde, you can take the parent substance, that number 50-00-0, and then decide what other registry numbers you may want to include. Most of the time, just a parent registry number is enough. Here I am looking at silene, and you see three different registry numbers for the author, the meta and the parasilene. And you can see the numbers are not even near each other numerically. Again, the numbers themselves say nothing about the compound. Many times in the literature, people writing up their papers are sloppy and will just say silene. So at Chemical Abstracts, they have a separate registry number where the position of the methyl groups is not specified. So if you're searching, for example, parasilene, you would search that registry number and then decide if you also want to include the registry number where the position of the methyl groups is not specified. As I point out here, once you take into account isotopic substitution, it will give you many more registry numbers. On this slide and on the next slide, I am looking at registry numbers for drugs. Many drugs have amine groups. Amines by themselves are not that stable. If you ever prepared aniline, it's this nice yellow, light yellow, when you first prepare it, it turns brown. Amines oxidize. That's why most drugs that contain amines are usually dispensed as salts, usually the hydrochloride or hydrobromide salts. The problem is that when drugs are mentioned in the literature, the fact that the salt version, the hydrobromide or hydrochloride, is being dispensed is not clearly mentioned. Sometimes they just give the name of the drug itself without specifying that it 
it is a salt. This means for a complete search, you need to search both the salt and its free amine version. The other aspect you must consider is that most drugs are optically active, but the exact stereochemistry is not always specified in the paper that's talking about the drug. It's more, stereochemistry is even more important these days because all new drugs, only one stereoisomer, the active one, can be sold. So you must search for these stereochemical variants, and that's what I'm illustrating on the next slide. I'm using propranolol as an example here. It's a member of a class of drugs called beta blockers, which are important in many different kinds of cardiovascular diseases. I know this drug well because I worked for the company that produced it. And about 20 years ago, it was the largest selling drug in the world. It is always dispensed as its hydrochloride salt a fact which is not always clearly mentioned. Notice the optically active carbon, so we need to consider stereochemistry. The way to name stereoisomers has changed during my career. So to keep life simple, I'm calling the isomers just plus and minus. So for propranolol itself, the free amine, you have the plus stereoisomer, the minus stereoisomer, the racemic mixture, which I'm calling plus minus, and also if the stereochemistry is not specified, chemical abstracts will also assign that version a unique registry number. The same thing for the hydrochloride salt, four different registry numbers. So if you are doing a search on propranolol, which really applies to any drug, you have to decide which ones of these registry numbers you want to include in your search. We saw that when searching for physical properties in the STN registry file, the easiest way to locate your substance is by registry number. To save money so you don't have to search in the registry file, it would be advantageous to be able to obtain the registry number for free at no cost. And here are several databases where you can enter what you know about the substance and you can find the registry number. These free databases that I'm showing you are not as complete as the STN registry file, but many substances will be here. This slide shows you two other convenient places to find registry numbers. Wikipedia is a source that you must use with caution, regardless of whatever you are looking up. But as I point out here, if you just click on the word Wikipedia, it brings you to a very informative video. And as I'm pointing out here, and you will see at the 12 minute mark in the video, for a lot of substances, besides the written text, you have something called a chem box. At the next slide, we'll take a look at one of these records. Here is a record for formaldehyde, which has this chem box. The chem box is always on the right hand side of the screen. And the chem boxes are usually very reputable data. They are put in by experienced chemists who do check exactly what they're putting in and everything they're putting in. And you can find registry numbers here. <clears throat> when you are looking at the text of any Wikipedia entry, including anyone on any chemical substance, read it very carefully. Look at their indicated references. And most of the time, you really want to look at the reference itself rather than the text that is in the body of the message. Again, the chem box is an exception, and you can trust everything that you see in it. We had been looking at the databases tab in this library guide. Another place to get registry numbers is the tab catalogs, especially the Sigma Aldrich catalog. 
Finally, under the physical tab, the NIST chemistry webbook, which we talked about before, is a good place to find registry numbers if the substance is in the webbook.